Hi, this is Larry from AeroShots. A few months ago, I started looking for an online solution to keep a logbook of my, of my drone flights. Uh, after trying various options, I came upon the website dronelogbook.com. I fell in love with it. It's been a fantastic website for maintaining logs of my drone flights. So I decided to make a couple of training videos uh, using Drone Logbook. I decided to make this training video into two parts. This is part one of using Drone Logbook, which is a f overview of the features. Uh, part two of the training video of using Drone Logbook, we're going to go into the more advanced features of reporting, logging your automatically logging your lights, and uh, maintaining the various reports. Looking at the various uh, plans that they have, they offer a standard plan, which is for the hobbyist or the recreational user, and there's no charge for this plan. The professional plan, which is for a small commercial uh, user or a small company with a small fee. Uh, enterprise plan, which is great for a corporation with many users, and they can all use the same logbook uh, in logging their own flights or sharing information in a private label. Looking at their sheet, you can see the various options that are available for the different plans. Um, the the hobbyist plan is great for non-commercial. The professional plan provides a few more options of uh, being able to export your data, uh, compliance reporting uh, to the different civil aviation authorities, and being able to create custom checklists. The enterprise plan offers even a few more options of including mission planning, of more custom reporting, uh, pre-flight forms and management of your various customers. After logging into the website, you're taken to the dashboard, which is basically your home screen for all the functions available to you. On the top menu, you can see you have your dashboard where you can also plan a mission, read your documents, reports, maintain your profile and contact customer support. I'm going to cover many of those options in part two of this training video. Yeah, other options you have on the dashboard are where you can watch, look at your flights, uh, maintain your inventory of drones, your batteries, your equipment, and log any incidences that you've that you've had. You can also keep a record of the maintenance you've performed, uh, locations that you've flown, and personnel within your organization, and maintain a list of your customers. Some of these last options are available only in the enterprise package of Drone Logbook. The dashboard also maintains a record of how many flights and how many landings you've had, and how many total hours you've flown. This is a reporting for either your counters or also your organization counter. Uh, if you have the hobbyist plan, you won't end up with the organization counters, just your own personal counters. The rest of the dashboard maintains a record of your latest flights. Uh, back up at the top of the dashboard, then you have your options of your flights your, and your inventory, the incidences and maintenance. Uh, this is the same as the top menu buttons, but gives you a little graphical view. Clicking on the flights button will take you to a much more in-depth uh, record of your flights uh, where you can also manually add a new flight, uh, add a flight based on a log file, or mass import them through a comma separated value uh, file. You also search your flights based on different search criteria. Uh, in your list of flights, you also have buttons for your actions where on the actions you can either uh, view your flight details, edit the flight info, uh, delete the flight, add media, documents, or attach documents, add incidents, or even add battery cycles to your flight. Clicking on a logged flight or viewing the flight information, you can see the total time of the flight, how long it was, the date and time of the flight, uh, which flight uh, drone you were using, the location, if there was a project or job associated to it, the type of the flight, the landings, uh, travel distance, maximum altitude, pilot information, any equipment that was used, and the weather information and weather notes that were used on this flight. I also enjoy the flight notes, let you add notes about that specific flight. You also have an option to uh, include any attachments uh, for the flight, including any battery cycles, the incidents, uh, any documents, flight area, and the media, which may be photographs or attached to videos from YouTube or something that's associated with this flight. Uh, the documents you can attach which could be um, permissions, uh, overflight permissions, uh, photo release forms, things of that nature. Incidents, we hope you don't have any, but they're required by the FAA to report them. And all this information will be reported on your report logs. Uh, here we have a battery cycle that's attached to this flight. So it shows the battery, the pre-flight and post-flight voltages, as also the charger voltage at the end and how long it took to volt. Uh, charge. Uh, we also had imported a, t a flight log in this case. It was a T log from a telemetry log from an APM or PixHawk, and it gives us the um, various uh, statistics for that flight, and including the 
uh, overlay of the flight and the elevation or altitude of that flight. Returning to the dashboard, we'll look at the option for maintaining a, an inventory of our equipment. First, we'll look at the drones. And here you can actually see a list of all the various drones that you have that you're maintaining flight logs on. And you can add a, add a drone, and you can include the type of drone, the model, the serial number, the ver, uh, firmware, software versions, all the indicative data for that type of drone that you maintain up to how many drones that you fly or your organization flies. Clicking on the battery option gives us an inventory of our batteries, including the time that the battery has been used in flight, uh, how many flights the battery has been used for, how many charging cycles, uh, the serial number, when it was purchased, other information on each of the batteries. Clicking on the cycles button for any specific battery brings up all the various charge cycles for that battery, including the voltages, how long it took to charge, and whether it's associated with the flight and the uh, voltages associated with that flight. Clicking on the view flight button for a specific charge brings you up the flight information that's associated with that battery cycle or that battery charge. Back on the top menu, clicking on equipment, we can look at other equipment that you've added to your inventory. In my case, I have a camera and the gimbal that we've got here. And it keeps track of your serial numbers and other information, uh, purchase date, things of that nature. Up there on your incidents tab, is where you it'll keep track of any incidents you have. In this case, I flew into a tree a few while back, so I've got a logged incident, luckily only one. But you'll also report any incidents that you've had. And again, these are used to re, on your reporting to the FA or your other uh, civil authority for, for, for aviation. A record of your maintenance is really important and excellent. It's also required for commercial use. Um, just basically keep a record of all the maintenance that you're doing and when the next time it's due. Well, if you add a maintenance option here, you can give it a name for which equipment you're using it for, um, the notes, status, cost, currency, and next time that it's required again. We'll cancel this one. In this case, I oils my motors uh, at the 20.2 20, 20 hours of flight. It's required again in 30 hours, so it's coming up pretty quick. Another menu option is your locations. Keep a record of all the places that you've flown uh, for your for your logbook. I've done on the West Coast, and here's a record of all the various locations that you fly, and you can add a location, and all, all places will require a location where you fly at, so you can pre-add them, or you can add them at the time when you create your flight logbook. Um, On the Enterprise Edition, you also have uh, personnel within your company. This is your organization personnel, and you can, you'll can you need to buy a seat for each person that you apply to your organization that can use this information. And uh, again, the name, and you can add what kind of role, who they are, information. And they'll be able to access the information and log their own flights, and you can share the information. Also under the Enterprise Edition, you have customers that you can maintain and you can maintain a list of your clients and your customers with contact information and all these will be associated with the flight and can also be used in your reporting. Returning back to the dashboard, these same menus that you see along this top row right here can pretty much be accessed also from the dashboard here. Uh, the other options for plan mission and documents and reports uh, we're going to cover in part two uh, under the, the hobby standard plan or the pro plan, some of these options are available to you on a limited basis, like reporting uh, on, the, on the standard plan. You can do reports, but it only gives you up to the last fl five flights or five in, uh, items in your inventory. It's just a little sample for you. And in the enterprise, obviously, you have full access to them. I hope you enjoyed this video and find drone logbook useful in keeping and maintaining a uh, logbook of all your drone flights. Be sure to check out part two of the video series here. I'm going to cover lo automatically logging your flight logs, uh, mission planning and reporting and compliance reporting for the FAA or other aviation authorities. Happy flying and safe flying. Thanks for watching.